Hello everyone, my name is Adam Wake and you are watching Adam's Perspective on Data. I just received some very, very interesting requirements from the business, uh, what I was working on in the last couple of weeks. The first was a uh, basket analysis. The requirement here was to see that if we, they select a product, what are the cross-selling products? So in the same order, what are the other products that they sold together with that item? The other analysis is the repeat purchase, where the management wanted to see that uh, if somebody purchased the product, after that, uh, what are the other items uh, that they purchased in the next order? So in this first video, I will explain how I resolved the basket analysis report. And in the next video, I will also explain the other topic about the repeat orders. First of all, let's take a look at the model. Uh, okay, so here you can see the model. You can see actually we have four tables. Uh, we have a calendar table with it, within that we have the year, uh, the date and the different date uh, categories. Uh, we have a customer um, uh, object which has uh, the customers, some customer groups and regions. Here we have the fact data in the invoices uh, with the invoice ID and the related uh, cost and price elements. And we have an item uh, dimension uh, with all the necessary details. If we look at it in, in a, a model view, you can see here that for the fact table that there is the calendar, the customer and the item connected. And we also created uh, some measure tables, some main measures like uh, what is the invoice amount, what is the margin, number of customers orders and SKUs. And we will use the basket measures and the repeat uh, purchase measures for our purposes. The first of the object on the page will be the left side that is the control. For this, we will use the item. And uh, here, this is the item, and we will use the invoice amount uh, as a bar chart like this. Uh, we will do some uh, formatting, we will remove the background, and uh, the bar uh, color, uh, we can change it. Uh, it will be a gradient uh, based on the margin. So here we can select the margin total, and the lowest value will be orange, the uh, highest value will be, will be blue. Uh, like this, uh, we can remove the legend and uh, actually uh, we can really change the uh, title to be on, uh, in the middle uh, and uh, we can also add a subtitle and in the subtitle we can say that the color is margin amount. Uh, also, we can uh, put it into the middle. Uh, we can also add some uh, filters uh, to the page, like uh, the product uh, category, with that we can select a specific product category. Also, by removing the, the background, changing the filter uh, to a drop down list, like this here. And to the middle, uh, with that we can uh, select a specific uh, range of products uh, here below. Uh, and also we can uh, copy this uh, filter and uh, we can add another uh, filter instead of this that will be not the product type but the item type within that we can select if we would like to see all the SKUs or only the base units now we can select only the base units and here we can select any items and the uh, challenge is to show the related items on the right in the next step, we have to solve a tricky thing. In the right part of the chart, we would like to show the items uh, that are the cross-selling items uh, for the selected products. So in the uh, same time, we have to deal with the selection that we are selecting on the left side, but we are showing the other products uh, that are not the selected products that how much uh, they generated. For this, I think the easiest way is to create a parallel item category that will be the related item. Creating the related item uh, is very easy, so just we just need to go to the modeling view, uh, create a new table, we will call it related item, and we will just clone the item table. Now let's start some coding. For this, uh, I will add the product type and the product ID uh, into a table format. Let's don't summarize that. And we will start creating a, a measure. In the basket measure, we use the dummy measure one. And I will call the first measure invoice amount related product. So the first step is to uh, create a, what is the selected item on the left. For that, we will call this variable selected item. And we will only use selected value item ID uh, that is selected on the left. Return. And let's start with uh, validating this. I'm adding this measure. It's empty, but as soon as I'm selecting the product, you can see the selected product item ID uh, in this measure. Next step is to uh, search the selected product type 
and so, uh, ultimately we would like to uh, search those items, those related items that are, that, that are outside of the selected products uh, uh, category. Uh, that means it's not a related uh, uh, accessory or uh, a related product, but a different product uh, that is a cross-selling product for the selected item. For that, uh, we will use a selected product type variable that will be a calculate uh, max product type in the item category, uh, filtering all items, where the item ID equals, equals to the selected uh, product. We can also check that. Now this is showing product groups, so whichever is selected, the product group is showing up here. After that, we will create a list of SOs that we can identify that what are those orders where the selected item was uh, ordered. Uh, so we can see that the related items should be in the same orders. So we will have a SO list, and here we will summarize the SOs and filtering uh, all selected invoices. With the all selecting, we can make sure that if uh, we applied any filters like a region filter for the invoices, it will be applied and it's not all the invoices, but all what is selected and is, is, is in our scope. Uh, so where the item ID equals to the selected product or the selected item, that will be the uh, table and we would like to have all the sales orders uh, within this category. And here comes the main part of the measure, that will be the related item sales. And here we will calculate that uh, uh, what is the invoice amount for actually all the items. So we would like to uh, catch all the items, not only the selected uh, on the left. Uh, and we would like to see those sales orders, uh, which are in the SOLIS that we calculated in the previous step, uh, where the item ID in the invoices in the values of the related item uh, ID. Uh, actually, this time we create a, a relationship between the invoices and the related item that we created, as in the related item we don't have the physical relationship, so we are creating the relationship with this line. And the last line is that the product type of the uh, selected item shouldn't be equal to the selected uh, product type. And let's see what it gives us. So here we have all the selected, uh, uh, all the related products uh, values. If we select any items here, it will show that what other items have been purchased uh, in the same time. Nice, now we have what we wanted, uh, but uh, maybe the amount uh, will not be enough measure for us because business may want to see uh, it from different angles. So we can add some other measures for the related products other than the amount, like the margin, the number of customers, the number of orders for the attachment rate, that how many uh, percent of the uh, sales orders the other products have been attached. So let's see how we can do that. So we will use this recently created measure and the, all we need to do is to change this invoice amount to the specific measure that we want to see uh, other than that. For now, the other important measure is the attachment rate. Uh, that is very easy to create. Attachment rate means that how much of the uh, orders of the original item, uh, another item was also uh, attached to that um, order. So attachment rate. And the only thing that we will do is to do the wide and uh, we will calculate the number of orders related product divided by the number of orders of the original product. We can quickly add uh, a date filter uh, to the report. Uh, with that, uh, we can specify the range uh, of time uh, when we would like to see the details. So in the slicer setting, I will select relative date and by default it will be to 24 months. I will make it a little bit uh, smaller 
and put it here so you can see now that all these items that are selected uh, are uh, for the last two years. As we now have all the measures that we need, now the, we need to choose the best visualization mode for this to show it in different angles. For that, I will use the good old scatter plot. So now you can see that if we select any of the products uh, on the left, uh, on the right, you will see that what are the product groups that, that have been purchased with the same orders, how many orders uh, they were purchased, in what amount, uh, with what margin, and how many customers. Also, you can have over and to see the details. Uh, we can also add another one uh, detail that we uh, created. So in the tool tip, if we add the attachment rate, uh, it also will be visible. So we can see that product uh, 14 uh, is uh, uh, added to the same order in all fifths of the orders uh, item uh, 33077 was ordered. But still there are more things that we can add. So all the uh, measures that we created uh, are showing uh, the entire period. Uh, what we can uh, do further, that we can show that what is the trend, like uh, for the related products, how they evolved in that last 40, uh, 24 months. For this, I've created a hidden duty page, and on this duty page, uh, I use this invoice line for the related product, and I'm using it uh, by months. For this, I'm using the year months rank. Uh, this is almost the same as the year months, it, uh, but this is a number format uh, that makes it a continuous axis instead of the year months. And this is necessary that with that, we can create a trend line uh, on this uh, one. Uh, so, a couple of uh, 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 little fix uh, can be uh, done here. For the x-axis, I don't need the values, uh, so I'd like to make it very simple. Uh, so from here also, I'm removing all the uh, values uh, and titles from the axis. Uh, and in the title, uh, I want to have a subtitle that is saying that uh, this is uh, by months and I put it uh, in between uh, and after that uh, for the title uh, I'd like to show here the full invoice amount and I also want to show uh, here uh, that what is the high level trend is it increasing or a decreasing uh, trend for this we can create a new measure uh, and this measure will be called uh, invoice amount label invoice amount table and for this I will use uh, a regression calculation uh, now I will just uh, copy it here uh, I will not uh, explain it in details uh, but uh, you will find a link uh, below the video uh, that will explain that how this uh, measure is working exactly uh, I'm modifying the measure to, uh, to have the correct measure here and after the return what we would like to write here that we would like to write the invoice amount for the related measure uh, in a specific format that uh, we can uh, specify the format like this and after that we can add uh, that if the slope, slope is uh, showing if this is an increasing or decreasing trend, if the slope is higher than uh, zero, uh, we can add a specific uh, 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 unicar character. Uh, there is an uh, uptrend, uh, otherwise this is a downtrend. We are ready with the measure and we can add this measure as a dynamic uh, title, like this. and. Here it is, it shows an up, uh, uptrend. We can put it uh, uh, in the middle, we can make it a little bigger, and that's it. Uh, maybe we can just uh, add uh, some background, some very minor uh, background with 9% or maybe 70% is enough for that. And we can do this uh, for the other uh, measures. Uh, yeah, and the other one in the subtitle, it's not just by months, but we can uh, uh, write here that invoice amount by months. 
and we can do it uh, for the other measures uh, as well, uh, uh, copying this uh, to this to this page. Here we go. We have everything. We have invoice amount, margin, uh, attachment rate, and customers. All the trends. So now we can remove those filters uh, from the tooltip and go back to the basket analysis. And on the basket analysis, we can set up the tooltip that it should be the tooltip page. So if we now select any products, and if we would like to analyze uh, product group 14, if we hover over, it immediately shows that what is the trend of the invoice amount, margin, attachment rate, and customers. We can go to the other one uh, or what. Uh, products and analyze how those uh, different aspects has changed over the time. And we are done. Pretty cool, isn't it? So uh, I hope that you uh, like it and you can uh, apply it to your companies. And if you liked it, uh, watch my next video about the uh, repeat uh, purchasing analysis. And also you can visit uh, adamsplus.com to see other content from me. Thanks for watching. Cheers.